Hello, students. This is your professor, Dr. Mink, and welcome to the first lecture for the material we will cover on Chapter 2. Chapter 2 is entitled Creating Applications with Visual Basic. Let's get started. This slide shows the topics covered in Chapter 2. For the purpose of this class, I take each chapter in the textbook and I break it up into a two-week segment. So in the first week for Chapter 2, we will cover 2.1 up to 2.5. Getting started with forms and controls, creating the graphical user interface for your first application, the infamous Hello World application, writing the code for the Hello World application, then we'll talk about label controls and multiple event handlers. The rest of the topics we'll cover in a second lecture for chapter two. This slide shows a list of the topics that we are going to cover for chapter two. In this class, we will take each chapter and dissect it into two pieces. The first topic, which is very significant, is getting started with forms and controls. And as you can see, it's section 2.1 from your textbook. And of course, you should have already read this material before watching this lecture. A form is the graphical user element that contains all of our controls. And a control could be a, a button bar, a button, text box, etc. And behind these controls, we will code events. We will place uh, programming code that performs specific tasks when the user interfaces with the control. And of course, I don't expect you all to understand exactly what that meant at this point in the course. We're going to uh, drill down into these topics at a very significant level of detail. So let's get started. When you start a new project in Microsoft Visual Studio and you select Visual Basic, the project starts with Form 1. That is the graphical user interface on which we are going to place controls. You can think of this as a window, or you can think of this as a form. Form is the term, the official term used by Microsoft. So here you can see a project that has started. Its name is Example Project. The project's form, and the default name in the upper left-hand corner is Form 1. You can see Form 1.vb added to Solution Explorer on the right-hand side. And you can see the properties of that form in the properties window. Next, we're going to discuss the properties window and how to use the properties window to select specific, specific controls and or objects. Here we see a screen print of the pop properties window open and the currently selected object is Form 1. Next to Form 1, you'll see its official name, long system name, and then you'll see a drop-down arrow box. If you select that drop-down arrow box, it'll give you a list, it'll display a list showing the names of all objects on that form. And then by clicking the name of an object, selects the object and you'll see all the properties for that object displayed in the properties window. This is one of two ways to select a specific object. Another way would be to select it graphically on the form with your mouse. Left click it. As you will see as you begin programming in Visual Basic, there are a significant number of properties for each of the objects you create. 
and you're going to have to keep track of them. One way is to use the categorizing and alph alphabetizing properties. These buttons affect the way the properties are displayed in the properties window. When the alphabetical button is selected, the properties are displayed in alphabetical order. This is personally my preference, but I'm not going to impose that on you. You may choose to use the categorize button. I find it easier to locate the properties if they're listed in alphabetical order. It still has the frequently used prop properties enclosed in parentheses and they appear at the top of the list. However, if you select the categorize button, the related properties are displayed, they're grouped by category. Uh, so this is something you're going to have to play around with and develop familiarity with and then select a preference that fits your style. The toolbox is another important toolbar and it lists all the controls that you can add to a form. Pointer, button, checkbox, uh, label, list box, list view, picture box, etc. It's a text box. All the, the controls that you're going to want to put onto a form. So to add a control to a form, you, you find it in the toolbox and you could double click it or you can drag and drop it. The first property I want to discuss in detail is the name property of a control. When you use the toolbox to place a control on a form, the system gives it a default name, button one, form one, text box one, etc. However, we want to change the control's name to be more meaningful, to uh, better reflect uh, the purpose of the control. For example, button one doesn't convey a button's purpose as well as the name button calculate tax. And what you see here on this slide, button calculate tax is called camel case. That's a convention um, that I learned uh, in my database experiences. Uh, so BTN means it's a button. Then the second part of its name begins with a capital calculate, and then tax the capital. That's easier to decipher. This is not a syntactical requirement. Now we're starting to get into the area of style. You don't have to use camel case. You could use a different naming convention. This is the creative part of programming. Whatever the name of that control is, that's determined by the programmer who, can trade, who, can, who created the control. So there is some creative freedom. And although no, I'm not gonna force you to use my conventions, if you just call everything button one, button two, button three, or you pick the names of the 10 dogs you own, God forbid, okay, we're gonna have a problem because that's not going to be intuitive and that's not going to be good form. So just, Think about this, and as we move forward, you'll see why having an intuitive, useful name is very important. The second property we'll discuss is the text property. Um, nearly every control has a text property, which, when created, is equal to the same value as the control's name. By default, the text property adopts the name of the control, which is a default name created by the system. However, the name property and the text property are not the same, and they can be changed to different values. A control's name property identifies the control in code. You're going to refer to that control using its name. However, the text property determines the text the control displays on the screen. So I could call a form, um, form main, and I could have its name, FRM, capital M, A-I-N. And I can leave form one as the text property 
for the newly named form. So, and the text property is simply what is displayed on the control on the graphical user interface. And this will become more apparent as we begin using the tutorials, completing the tutorials, and changing name and text properties. Okay, students, we're ready to create our first program. It's very important that you complete the tutorials in this class, especially the ones at the beginning of the class. If you want to succeed, there's only one way to learn how to program, and that is to program. So, no further ado, please turn to page 53 and complete tutorial 2-1, creating the graphical user interface for the Hello World application. You can pause this and come back to it when you're finished. The Hello World program can be described as an event-driven program, okay? And it contains a message box, uh, which is a small pop-up window that displays um, a string of text. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as a dialog box. Okay, and it's displayed by calling the message box dot show method, which is code. Show is a member function, a small program that is available to the message box object or control. Below, you'll see the line of code, message box dot show, and then in parentheses, the string hello world. So message box is the object separated from the method or member function by the dot operator. Show is the method and then the argument passed to the method is the string hello world. Now Let's review the components of the Hello World program that I know you created during the tutorial. The graphical user interface for the Hello World application has three components. It has the form, and we'll leave the form with its default system name, Form 1. So the text, Form 1, will initially be the same as the name. A button control named, which, and we are going to change the name of the button to button display message. And this button causes the message, hello world, to be displayed when it's clicked. That is the event. Okay, so a label, the third component is a label control named label message. Initially, it displays the text, click the button. That's its default text property. So we're going to add the label to the form, or you are, probably already did this, you label to the form, and we're gonna change its name property to LBL message, and we're gonna change its initial text property to click the button. However, when the user clicks the button control, the event handler, changes the label's control text to hello world. Now that we've created the graphical user interface elements, we've placed for the program, we've placed the controls on the form we're going to write the code, very simple code too, for the Hello World application. Okay, here comes the exciting part. We are going to write some code. In order to code an event for a control, you double click the control in the design mode, the window that shows the graphical user interface. 
And when you do that, it will open up the code window. And the first time you click a control, it creates a code template for the event handler for that particular control. The event handler is the code that gets executed when the user interacts with the control. And what we're going to do is we're going to code an event handler for the button, uh, the button click. So when someone clicks on the button, it will then go in and it will change the text property of the label. And you'll see that next. So here you're seeing the completed click event handler for that button. And remember, we renamed, or you should have renamed in the tutorial, the button to button display message, BTN display message. And what we're doing is we're using, and this is the first coding we're doing, we're using the equal sign, which is also known as the assignment operator. And the value on the right-hand side of the assign assignment operator gets assigned to the property on the left-hand side. So let's dissect this. This is really important. So label message is the label that we created. And text is its text property. So in order to change the text property, we have to address it as control.property or object.property. Label message.text is being assigned the string, double quotes, hello space world. So whatever was in the text property of the label message control or object gets reassigned to the new value, which is the string hello world. And that will display in the graphical user interface. Once you have gained some experience, uh, you'll want to constantly be switching between the code window and the designer window. Remember, the designer window is where you build the graphical user interface. That's the artistic creative part of this. I, I shouldn't say creative part because the coding is also very creative. So once they're both open, you'll see tabs on the desktop. So to, so to switch to the code window, you just simply click the tab that reads form1.vb. To switch to the designer window, click the tab that reads form1.vb design. Okay. One contains the code, the actual programming statements that are executed based on events in the graphical user interface, and the other is where you actually build the graphical user interface. And don't worry too much about the interactions between these two windows at this point in time. We're just trying to get some very basic uh, foundational concepts uh, under your belt at this point in time. This slide shows a few more ways to switch between the code window and the designer window. You can use the Solution Explorer to open the code window, um, or you can perform any of the following actions. I don't use any of these, <laughs> but I'll just go through them anyway. Click View on the menu bar, then select Code or Designer. You can press Shift plus F7 on the keyboard to open the designer window, or Press Control plus Alt plus Zero to open the code window. Never done that, but now we know how to. Here we have three very important uh, modes and some new terminology that you'll have to become familiar with very quickly. Visual Basic has three modes in which it operates, design, run, and break. Um, We've been discussing design mode extensively over the past um, however many slides in this lecture. And that's 
the mode that you use to create the application. And during the, the application uh, creation is also known as design time. Run mode executes the application in the Visual Studio environment. It's also known as runtime. And you can actually see the application run as though it will when we create the final executable. Break mode is kind of a variation of run mode. It allows you to momentarily suspend execution of a running application for the purpose of debugging and testing. So you could put a break in an application so that when a certain event happens, it will pause and you can see um, you could see the values of your variable. We're getting way ahead of ourselves now, but, but just know that break mode is used for testing and debugging, and we will drill down on that topic. Next, we need to uh, discuss how the projects are organized. A solution uh, is a container that holds Visual Studio projects. And each time we create a new project, we'll create a new solution to hold it. And that includes a folder called the solution folder. And it contains the solution file and a project folder. The solution file carries the .sln uh, extension. And you can double click the .sln file and that will open the project in the Visual Studio environment. The project folder contains tons of information, all kinds of different files and folders generated by Visual Studio. The project file is also uh, clickable. You can double click the .vb proj, VB proj file to open the project in Visual Studio. So the solution and the project file are both recognized as files that will uh, load the project into Visual Studio. When you submit a project to me for grading, because of the complexities and the multiple files included in a project, I'm going to require you to compress the project. And while I go over that, I'll actually post a video, or I have posted a video that shows you how to compress your project and submit a zip file to me for grading. Here's more information related to the last slide, which shows how to open a Visual Studio, an existing project that you created. Maybe you didn't finish it, maybe you did. Uh, maybe you want to go back and finish more uh, or work more on it. With Visual Studio running, you uh, can perform any of the following actions. You click a file, then select Open a Project, and locate either the solution or the project file, and they're, um, they carry the .sln for the solution and the .vbproj um, extension for those particular uh, files. You can click, click File, then select Recent Projects and Solutions, and you'll see, once again, a list of uh, solution and project files on the list. You can start the, you can use a start page to open the project. Um, if start page is not visible, click view, then select start page. Um, I don't know that this is very intuitive. And, and I think after a short period of time, uh, you'll be uh, experts in opening projects. It's not that big of a deal. Now on to section 2.4, <clears throat> we're going to drill down on the label controls. Labels are used extensively in graphical user interfaces. So it's something you need to become very familiar with. And as a matter of fact, our first little tutorial project, Hello World, used a label. And uh, we set the default text, and then we changed it with an event handler for the button. Label controls have various properties that uh, affect the control's appearance. Um, when a label is created, it is automatically given a default name 
and it'll start with label one, label two, and so on. So if you create 12 labels, the 12th will be label 12. And so the labels control text property is initially set to the same as the label's name. So if you create a label, the first label in a form, add it to a form, it will be label one. Label one will be its name, and label one will also be its text property. Remember, they are not one and the same. They are different. The text property does not have to equal the label name. So as we did in the tutorial, the Hello World tutorial, we changed the label's property, a text property, to, um, I can't recall what it said, click here or click the button, something like that. But that was not the label's name. The label's name was also changed in uh, the properties window. So you want to be aware of this because it's very common to set a label's text property to empty. In other words, no text at all. And it will be sitting there in the graphical user interface, but you can't see it until an event happens. So you click a button and then you change the text and you see a label appear where there was nothing before, or you thought there was nothing, but there was just an empty label. Very common to do this. Okay, now that we've gotten past the name and the text property, uh, we'll talk about what I consider to be the next most important properties for uh, or property for labels. Now that's the font property. It allows you to set the font, the font style, and the size of the controls text because most labels are uh, messaging instruments and you want them to look and react um, as you plan. So you click on the label either in the um, properties window or in the uh, design view. And then you move down to the font property and you'll see a drop down box with font, four color, size, everything else. All of the font attributes are defined as properties in the property window. Now we're on to the border style property. And this property determines the appearance of the border that surrounds the labels. And it can have one of three values. None, which is the default, which means the label has no border. Fixed single, the label will be outlined with a border one pixel wide. Or fixed 3D, the label will have a recessed 3D appearance. If you're going to do a border style, I think the 3D appearance is, is cool. It's the one I prefer. It looks uh, aesthetically more desirable than uh, the fixed single. But once again, this is a style preference and we're getting into the, uh, getting away, with the, away from the analytical, technical aspect of programming and the creative aspect. The auto size property is a Boolean property and Boolean is a new term. Boolean simply means a value or an item that only has one of two values, and those are true or false. A Boolean cannot be anything but true or false. It's also a binary item. So when it's set to its default, which is true, the bounding box automatically resizes itself to fit the amount of text assigned to it, even if you go and change the text property with an event handler, it will resize itself to fit the amount of text. When it's set to false, the labels property uh, may be changed in the designer window with its sizing handles. And those are the, the little handles on the corner that you can left click and drag and the bounding box uh, remains the size it was given at design time. However, if you have auto size set to false and you change the text with an event handler. If the text is too large to fit in the bounding box, it will only be partially displayed. So you want to use great caution in uh, utilizing the auto size uh, property set to false.
In talking about the various properties for labels, much of this should be familiar to you from uh, general word processing formatting uh, conventions. The text align property changes the way a label's text is aligned. And you have, um, when, you, when you select the drop down arrow in the text align property, you'll see top left, middle left, middle center, and these, um, these dictate the alignment of the text within the boundary uh, given on the, in, in the design view. If you wish to change the, uh, a label's text align property with a code statement, you can do that. Uh, you use content alignment dot top left, top center, top right, middle left, middle right, to correspond to the selections you had in the property window. And so, for example, if we had a label called label report title, the line of code to change the text alignment to middle center would be label report title dot text align equals content alignment dot middle center. So we're assigning the new uh, alignment criteria or, or alignment status, I should say, to um, the text align property. The four color property for a label sets the actual color of the text. The back color property sets the background color. In the properties window, you select the controls color property, then click the down arrow button that appears, and then you can select a color from the list. It's the standard colors that you'll have in any Windows application. Um, this is very simple. Here, we're reviewing something that we covered briefly earlier in this lecture, which is how to change the text property with code. So in this example, we created a label and we changed its name to label output. Remember, it would be label one or label two or label 37, which is the system assigned scheme. So the name has been changed and we are changing its text property and we're using the assignment operator, which is the equal sign. So here's the syntax, here's the grammar, if you will, needed to make that happen. On the left-hand side is the item receiving the value on the right-hand side or being assigned the value on the right-hand side. So in this case, label output dot text, the text property for the label named label output is being assigned the string, thank you very much. Please note that the text property for a control can only accept strings. You can't assign a number. Now, let me say that could be thank you 25 very much. So the 25 would not be a numeric value. They'd be part of a string. And we'll get into more of that later. But if they're in double quotes, even if it's a numeric value then double quotes, it's treated as a string, not a numeric value. And, and don't fret about that now because we are going to spend a lot of time differentiating between strings and, and numeric values. If you want to clear a label, you have to assign an empty string to the controls text property. And it will, in essence, disappear from the graphical user interface because there will be no text displayed. And here is the code necessary to do that. So we have a label. Uh, we renamed it label answer. And the line of code necessary to clear that label is label answer dot text equals, and that is the empty string. It's two um, adjacent double quotes. There's no space in there. It might look like that, but it's two double quotes. You can also clear a label by using a special value called string.empty. We're getting a little, little bit advanced here, but the text, I'm sorry, the code necessary to do it is label.answer.text, label, label answer.text, sorry, equals, and instead of the 
literal empty string, you use string.empty. And, and I hesitate to even show you this now because it'll become apparent what that is later in the class, but we are just getting started here. So don't, don't worry about using string.empty until later if you want to. Next, we'll cover the content from section 2.5, creating multiple event handlers. This is very simple. So let's get started. Let's look at the example on this slide. We have um, three buttons that have been created um, in the design view. And we simply uh, create click handlers for the buttons by double clicking each button um, in design view and uh, an, em an empty a template event handler is created in the form's source code file. And you'll see what, that, what those three adjacent uh, event handlers look like uh, on the next slide. Now would be a good time, if you haven't already done this, to pause this and um, turn to page 77 in your textbook and complete tutorial 2-3, which is the language translator application. Um, in this slide, we talk about code for multiple buttons, and um, it's a continuation of the previous slide. And here we have the click event handler for three buttons, and the names of those three buttons were button first, button second, button third, obviously changed from the default system assigned. Uh, names. And we simply change the labels message, the label message dot text to you click the first button, you click the second button, or you click the third button, depending upon uh, which button was selected. Here we have um, some screen prints of uh, the various button clicks. Uh, the first button, after the first button is clicked, you click the first button, uh, second button, third button, we see that the label text was changed based upon the button that was clicked. 